All right, buckle up everybody, because today we are diving headfirst into the wild world of modern slang. It's a jungle out there. It really is. And we are gonna need a machete to hack through all these new words and phrases. I think maybe more like a decoder ring. Okay, yeah. Like some kind of linguistic key to unlock what kids are saying these days. Right? Exactly. Because it's changing faster than ever, especially with Gen Z. And we've got a treasure trove of articles to help us crack the code today. We've got this awesome slang glossary from Polestar News, which is like straight from the source, you know? Right. Straight from the mouths of the people who are actually using these terms. And then because it wouldn't be a deep dive without going, well, deep, we've got these pieces about brain rot from the New York Times and SBS News. They're asking the tough questions like... Is all this slang actually melting our brains? Which is a question I'm sure a lot of people are asking, right? Yeah. Especially parents. Oh, 100%. And we're going to get into all of that. Oh, and we also cannot forget about the Daily Dots take on Australian Senator Fatima Payman's attempt to win over Gen Z voters using, you guessed it, slang. Yeah. That was something. It definitely got people talking. So yeah, today's mission, should you choose to accept it, is to equip you, dear listener, with the knowledge and maybe, just maybe, the courage to navigate this ever-evolving landscape of words. Because let's be honest, sometimes it feels like a whole new language is popping up overnight. It really does. And nobody wants to be that person who's constantly saying, what does that even mean? Like, I want to be hip, you know? I want to be down with the kids. Well, I think that's a good goal to have. But it's also okay to admit when you don't understand something. Curiosity is key here. And that's what makes this topic so fascinating, right? It's a window into how this generation communicates, how they build community. And that's what we're all about here on The Deep Dive, right? Understanding, not judging. So let's jump into it. And I think the best place to start is with this slang glossary from Polestar News. It's like a buffet of bizarre and often hilarious words and phrases. It really is. And what's interesting to me is how many of these terms originate from memes or viral videos. Yeah, that seems to be a common theme these days, right? Like one minute it's this obscure joke online and the next it's part of everyday conversation. And that's partly because of how quickly things spread online. Mm. A term can go from being completely unknown to being everywhere in the blink of an eye. It's wild. Okay, so are you ready for some examples? Because this glossary is, uh, it's something else. Hit me with your best shot. Okay, how about Skibidi? Now, before you picture someone gracefully gliding down a snowy slope. Which is what I was pitching, to be honest. Oh, so was I the first time I heard it? But no, no, no. It actually comes from this. Well, it's a meme, of course, featuring, get this, a head in a toilet. Okay, I did not see that coming. Yeah. And the meaning. Oh, the meaning is just as wonderfully weird. It can be good, bad, or somewhere in between, depending on the context. It's like the Swiss army knife of slang. Right. And that's what makes it so fascinating. It's like, how did we even get here? How did Skibidi go from a head in a toilet to a word that can mean basically anything? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And I think it speaks to the creativity and, let's be honest, the absurdity of internet humor. Okay. Okay. I've got another one for you. Riz. Have you heard this one? Yeah. Riz. It's like, your game, right? Yeah. How smooth you are, especially when it comes to flirting. Yeah, like how much romantic charm you have. It's your riz, which I have to say, it's oddly specific, isn't it? Like we needed a word for that. Well, I think it speaks to how important those interactions are, especially for younger generations. Dating apps, social media, it's all about putting yourself out there. And riz is a big part of that. Right. It's like you need to have good riz if you want to succeed in the digital dating world. Exactly. And that's what makes this so fascinating. These terms are like linguistic puzzles reflecting the humor, anxieties, and even the absurdity of internet culture. It's true. Dating apps have changed the game, but it's not all fun and games, right? Yeah. This brings us to the other side of the coin. Brain rot. Alongside all this creative slang, this term keeps popping up, and frankly, it sounds a little scary. So brain rot. Scary sounding term, right? Should we be worried? Is it like a real medical thing? I mean, are our brains actually rotting? Yeah, well, not literally, no. But it is a term that's popping up more and more, especially when people are talking about, well, us. You mean like older folks? Maybe. But really, I think it's more about a general anxiety we have about our digital lives, right? Like, mm -hmm. are we spending too much time online? Is it changing us? And if so, is it for the better or... or for the worse? Because that's kind of the implication with brain rot, right? Like it's not a good thing. Right. And that's where these articles get really interesting. The New York Times piece, they connected to this term problematic interactive media use, which sounds very official. Yeah, a mouthful for sure. But it basically means that, yeah, there's a growing concern, especially among like 
therapists and researchers that all this screen time it might be having some negative effects on people, especially young people. Which makes sense, right? I mean, our brains aren't exactly used to this constant barrage of information and stimulation. Exactly. And the thing is, it's not just about the amount of time we're spending online. It's also about the type of content we're consuming. Okay, so, like, doom scrolling through bad news all day versus, say, I don't know, learning how to bake sourdough bread on YouTube. Exactly. And the Newport Institute, they're really focused on the mental health aspect of all this. And they're saying that brain rot can manifest in a lot of different ways, like difficulty concentrating, low self-esteem, even anxiety and depression. So it's not just like, oh, I can't remember where I put my keys. It's more serious than that. It can be, yeah. And the SBS News article, it brings up this idea of a limited content diet, which I think is a really helpful analogy. Okay, I like analogies. Lay it on me. So think about it like this. Imagine if you only ate junk food all the time. Sure, it might taste good in the moment, but eventually your body's going to start feeling the effects, or you're not getting the nutrients you need to function at your best. Right, you're going to feel sluggish, maybe get sick more often. Exactly. And it's the same with our brains. If we're constantly feeding them this diet of, like, clickbaity headlines, shallow content, endless scrolling, it's going to have an impact on our mental health, our ability to focus, even our creativity. So it's not necessarily about giving up the internet entirely. It's about being more mindful of how we're using it. Exactly. It's about balance. And it's about being honest with ourselves about how all this digital stuff makes us feel. Like, do you ever finish scrolling and feel kind of empty <laughs> or anxious? Or like you just wasted an hour of your life? Oh, all the time. Right. And that's not to say that all online content is bad mm -hmm. or that everyone who uses the internet is going to experience brain rot. Of course not. I mean, we're using the internet right now to have this conversation, and hopefully our listeners are getting something valuable out of it. Exactly. But I think it's important to be aware of the potential downsides and to develop healthy digital habits. Absolutely. And speaking of digital habits, this brings us to a really fascinating case study, Australian Senator Fatima Payman. Oh, yes. This is a perfect example of how tricky it can be to navigate these generational differences when it comes to language especially in the political sphere. Because she tried to use slang to connect with younger voters. Exactly. And not, not just any slang. She went all in. Like she opened up Urban Dictionary and just went for it. Pretty much. We've got goofy uh, capeaholics. Yeah. She even threw in a skibidi for good measure. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And the Internet. Well, let's just say they had a field day with it. I bet. Because it's like you can't just force it, right? Slang only works when it feels authentic, like it's a natural part of how you speak. Exactly. And in Payman's case, it came across as, well, a little try-hard, a little inauthentic. Yeah, it's like she accidentally put on her teenage son's clothes instead of something that actually fit her. So where does all this leave us? We've gone from bussin' to brain rot, and honestly, it can feel a little like learning a whole new language, right? It can feel that way for sure, especially with how quickly things change online. It's like one minute you're hip, you're with it, you know what Riz is. And the next minute you're the out-of-touch parent who's just trying to understand what the heck skibidi means. Exactly. But I think the key takeaway here is, like you said earlier, curiosity, right? Instead of being intimidated by all this new slang, we should be curious about it. Absolutely. It's an opportunity to connect with younger generations, to learn something new, to expand our own vocabulary even. And who knows, maybe we'll even pick up some cool new phrases along the way. Right. I mean, I'm not saying you should start busting out goofy ah in your next work meeting. Although that would be pretty funny. It would be entertaining. But the point is, language is constantly evolving, and slang is a huge part of that evolution. It's like a snapshot of culture, right? It tells us what's important to people, what they're thinking about, what they're finding funny or interesting. Exactly. So... Instead of seeing it as a threat, let's see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. I love that. Hmm. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the ever-evolving world of slang, any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Stay curious. Be mindful of your digital diet. And don't be afraid to ask when you don't understand something. You might be surprised at what you learn. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this linguistic adventure. Until next time, keep those ears open and those minds curious.